Hello everyone, in today's video, we're going to be answering the question, how much wind is too much wind? Now that's like one of those questions where you're like, oh, what are you going with this? But uh, I recently had to cancel yet another real world flight because of wind. And uh, one of the interesting things about that, of course, is you're like, okay, so you're talking 30 knots, 40 knots, 50 knots. Uh, how much wind were we talking? We we're talking about 16 knots of wind, and uh, it was actually gusting wind. Now you're probably sitting there again going, that's not that bad. So that's what we're here to explore today. So we have ourselves our lovely runway too. We're in Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, don't mind the clouds. They're actually a good height for us right now. And we're sitting here in our, again, our 172. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and progressively make the wind worse. And then we're going to explore kind of sort of uh, what happens uh, when that happens as well. So I'm going to start, of course, with a really, really base of wind here. Uh, nothing too, too extreme. I'm going to come down the runway a little bit and just kind of give you an idea of uh, what it's like when the situation gets a little bit worse here. So we're looking at a 2.5 wind here, about zero. It's about zero two four or something like that. That's okay. 2-4, we're going to go ahead and put it uh, right up to uh, 10 knots, and we're going to go ahead and... <laughs> we're going to do 10 knots, and uh, we're going to go right up to the gust speed that we had today as well, which was an 8-knot gust, which is substantial, substantial, and we're going to assume that the gust comes out at 2-0 here. So we have a pretty pretty good wind here. Uh, this is uh, nothing serious. It's a 25-11 gusting 9, uh, which means we're going up to 20 knots. And this, of course, is the wind I canceled on. And you're like, that's not that bad. So let's go ahead and uh, experience this wind a little bit and see what happens here. So there's a couple of things we're going to be interested in, of course. Uh, we're going to be interested in stability. And uh, the other thing we're going to be interested in, of course, is going to be passenger comforts. Uh, one of the things we don't think about very often in the flight simulator is what's going to happen to our passengers uh, once things start rocking. Uh, the first thing, of course, is uh, you have to remember many, many passengers are not pilots. Uh, when things start getting interesting for them, they start getting a little panicky on you. Now, I haven't touched my controls other than doing the initial sort of uh, lifting the nose up off the ground. And you can see with this very, very mild, very, very gentle wind here in my 172 that we're just kind of getting bounced a little bit here. Um, you can definitely tell that we have some, and of course, in the real world, we get this nice little turbulence as well. We come over, you know, the berm down there, which you can see over my left wing. But it wouldn't be terrible. And uh, that's kind of kind of the idea, you know? This is, this is comfortable. I can, I can work with this all afternoon. So let's skip to the part where we have to land. All right, so now we're coming around for a landing here. Our normal approach speed in a 172 is about 60 knots. Now, the interesting thing, of course, and one thing I appreciate that Flight Sim does, is if you look down at the Connecticut River right now, you can see how it's kind of getting bounced all over the spot. Now, one thing I notice as a pilot is as I turn final here, I'm got my flaps down, I've got my power, you'll probably observe the fact I'm at uh, almost 2100 RPM right now. Uh, my aircraft is uh, buzzing pretty hard as we come into this wind because it is relatively substantial. Uh, one other thing I'm noticing too is a directional control is getting much more interesting. Again, this is not a heavy wind. This is only the wind, like I said, that it canceled on. Now you're still going, did you really cancel on this wind? Uh, the answer is yes, it was a crosswind. But uh, again, we're just interested in direct winds for today. So we're gonna kind of ride this one down and see what happens. So uh, one thing I'm noticing for me as a pilot here is this is, it's not work, but this is not easy. And uh, one thing Flight Sim is not doing correctly here is the fact my speed should be shaking everywhere. Um, you can see it only changes when the nose comes up a little bit. It's actually very unrealistic. My uh, airspeed indicator should be everywhere. All right, coming down. Remember, this is just a nine knot gusting. It's uh, nothing significant here. Um, we're not we're not getting massively whacked around here. Now, imagine for a second if you were a passenger on this aircraft for a second. Now, you'd be sitting here going, oh my gosh, I thought we were going to die about three or four times. And then, of course, when we get ourselves down to the ground, uh, for some reason, Flight Sim doesn't feel the need to uh, make it interesting for me as far as uh, making it go all over the runway, which is what it would do in the real world. But you can see, uh, we still got ourselves down relatively straightforward. Uh, Flight Sim decided to cut me a break there at the end and I'll make it a little bit less. So let's go ahead and increase that wind a little bit. That was manageable. It would have made me, as a pilot, uh, I would have been a little nervous. I would have been a little nervous, but I'm pretty confident I could have gotten that down. So let's go up into the 20s now. So we're going to start our base wind. Is so going to start at 20 knots here. And we're going to increase our um, gust wind, of course, proportionally here. So we're going to assume that this is a half of that as well. So now we're looking at, instead of a 9 knot gust, we're basically a 15 knot gust with a 20 knot. So let's go ahead and uh, put the flaps up. I'll go ahead and push the throttle all the way forward and see what happens. Now, remember, this wind is still down the runway. Um, we haven't done anything yet. 
Now, one thing they're getting completely wrong here, and completely 100% wrong, is my airspeed indicator should be everywhere right now. Uh, any sort of wind gusts like that, you'd see it constantly going up and down. And also notice how once I've lifted up off the ground, there's no drama whatsoever. The aircraft I just you know smoothly kind of climbs here. That would just, no, it would be absolutely all over the place. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of nervous about the way that that's not behaving correctly. Nope, it's at the correct level. And um, for whatever reason, it just... It's being gentle, you know, even though we have winds that are very, very strong, um, this aircraft would be uncontrollable. I mean, it, you could manage it, but the plane would be absolutely everywhere in the sky right now. So this is uh, much, much too easy. One thing I find cool again is if I actually look down over the Connecticut River, you can see how the entire Connecticut River is getting a little nasty. So let's come around and uh, put this thing on the ground now. Well, that was the uh, most eventful traffic pattern I think I've ever flown. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, so we're coming around now, and um, this aircraft is, um, believe it or not, I'm pointing straight, and uh, you'll probably observe here that it's uh, getting very, very uncontrollable. Um, I still have most of my hand on the wheel here, and you'll notice that I'm, I am starting to get that fluctuation a little bit in the airspeed indicator. But from a passenger comfort perspective, the fact that the aircraft is uh, no longer staying relatively level would be basically death uh, to most passenger tummies. You know, the unenlightened pilot here would have a good time. Uh, one thing to observe here, of course, is the fact that um, as I'm approaching to a landing here, oh my gosh, <laughs> oh, come on. Let me land the plane, man, guy. Um, you'll see that I don't seem to be moving very fast over the ground. And uh, that's correct, because uh, now I have almost half of my speed is uh, made up of the wind. That is, uh, can, oh my gosh. Whoa. <laughs> okay, here. I think I have to pay attention. Um, now half of my speed is uh, made up of uh, what's coming down the pipe here. So if the wind were to suddenly cut out, we'd fall out of the sky, because I'm, oh my gosh. I'm actually having to earn this one. So this is again 2015. So this is um, in the real plane. Remember, just because I'm sitting here comfortably in my you know office chair does not mean I could do this in the real plane. I would be being bounced around even though I have my safety belt cranked down as hard as it possibly can. Oh my gosh! What the heck? Oh my gosh! This is um, this is uh, yeah, end of the plane kind of a thing like that. But you can imagine what this would be like, like I said, to passengers. Also notice that flight sim's like, oh, we'll give you a break. You, you finish the approach. You can go ahead and land now. And then it whacks me with that at the last second. I appreciate that. So we'll go ahead and uh, cut the power here. We would never come in this slow. Uh, this would be dangerous, of course. Now notice here, we don't get any drama. That's completely unrealistic. The drama would actually continue all the way down to the ground. So you can see how uh, we still got ourselves on the ground safely. Um, very, very uncomfortable sort of a situation. Not that great. But uh, that's just not enough. Uh, for the purposes of demonstration, the purposes of science, let's make this interesting. So we're going to now jump up a quite a bit more here. Um, originally, we were doing that kind of a thing. Let's go ahead and uh, bring that up to 35 knots. And of course, our gusting is uh, going to match it. Uh, we're going to go up to 20 knots of gusting. Actually, it'll be technically 22 knots of gusting. So that's uh, pretty substantial. That's uh, pretty substantial. So let's go ahead and take off like we did before. And again, remember in the real world, the wind affects you on the ground. A flight sim doesn't seem to bother with that. And that's actually, I'm not going to lie, that's incredibly unrealistic. Probably one of the, another one of those least realistic things. Notice my takeoff run is negligible <laughs> because the wind is so strong. And you also observe that my ground speed is like nothing. I'm barely going here. And you can see uh, it's kind of gently slur sort, of, sort of floating is the way to describe it. Now, if the winds were gusting as hard as it said it was, um, we should be all over the sky. So I'd be very, very curious to what happens when we get a little bit higher and get set up for landing here. All right, the runway is ahead. Let's do it. Now, um, that was probably one of the more interesting traffic patterns. I thought that the last one was uh, kind of exciting. Uh, this one was exceptionally exciting. It was very, very difficult to keep lateral control of this plane. And keep in mind, those are speeds in the air. Uh, when you're down trying to get onto the ground, it's a very different experience. So I've got a new problem now, and uh, that's the fact that because the wind is so strong, it's uh, taking me 25 minutes to get back down to the ground. And uh, we've actually demonstrated this uh, many times on this other channel before, where um, we have the ability to go ahead and kind of get this thing down on the ground, you know, and, and oh my gosh, like you can actually start to see the yoke being worked here because I actually have to kind of keep this thing stable. So remember your passenger on board this plane. Um, you're watching the pilot frantically work the yoke right now. And um, you can already see that we're having lateral difficulties. We're having control difficulties. Um, this plane wants to stall at any moment here. And you can actually see that we are completely stalled, even though I'm actually at full throttle right now. Um, now, I'm, oh my gosh, I'm not having to earn this one. Now, one of the things that everybody gets killed by is they start working the rudder. If you uh, work the rudder here, you are going to cross control and you're going to crash. But um, this is one of the things, um, and again, it's a flight sim thing. Like, if I need to do full deflection, let me do full deflection. Don't fight me. Oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> wow. This is uh this is uh this is something else. This is something else. And I think I can make it work. And remember, this experience of being whipped should be all the way down to the ground. It is what it would be in the real world. I hope I don't make my joystick rip off the ground here. This is a uh, this is incredible. Whoa, and I oversped my flaps. Okay. Now notice it's mellowing out as we get lower. That's completely unreal. No! We died. Believe it or not, they actually cut down those trees. So it did make it safer. So as you could see, uh, it was a really, 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 really bad situation. Uh, that was a situation we could have made it, but um, of course uh, we would have to have come in a lot steeper, which would mean we have all that extra energy when we go to get onto the ground. Now, what I said originally, of course, was those are all headwinds we were dealing with, uh, gusting headwinds. Let's make it the gusting crosswind that I was discussing a little bit earlier today. Now, let's go grab that wind, and uh, of course, uh, we're going to get in the worst possible direction here, and uh, we're going to say that it was 11 knots. Yeah, it looks pretty good right there. And we'll go ahead and uh, set that sucker up, and uh, we'll go ahead and pull this from the side as well. It was a uh, gusting 9. So now we have ourselves a pretty hefty uh, wind there. And again, this is pretty tame. I mean, we've, we've done some pretty good landing so far today. But let's explore just how nasty this could have been. You know, one of the reasons why I said it. Now notice, of course, uh, my aircraft immediately uh, wanted to deflect in the wind. Notice I've got my ailerons completely dipped into the wind. I'm doing all my standard cross control. And um, fun fact, I'm actually out of right rudder. I can't push my right pedal any further forward. So I am desperate, I'm actually tapping, having to hit the brake here in order to keep this thing controllable. Now let's go ahead and uh, transition into the air here. Uh, you can see just how much rudder I'm still engaging here to try to keep this somewhat stable. And again, this is considered not that bad uh, compared to what we just saw a few moments ago. Now you can see I'm having to cross control to kind of keep ourselves uh, somewhat down the runway here as we were a moment ago. So kind of uh, sneak in, put a little bit of crab angle. And again, this is not a strong crab angle. And uh, keep in mind too that the turbulence I mentioned that would come with a wind like this is not existence right now. Uh, we'd be being bounced everywhere. So let's go bring that into a landing and see what happens. All right, so we're even doing the noise abatement procedure properly. Everybody looks at my landing here and like, what are you doing? You have to come in straight. No, you don't. You have to not go over people's houses. See those people? They complain. <laughs> so now we have the same situation I mentioned before. Um, this is our basically 11 knot gusting up to uh, 20 or so, which as we saw from our takeoff directly into the wind situation, it wasn't pleasant, but it was manageable. Now, some of you, of course, are saying, why don't you land on the cross run runway, which is right there? Wouldn't that just be a lot easier to do? Um, that's why. But again, of course, uh, when you're with passengers, uh, things that we do in flight training uh, aren't necessarily things we want to do in the real world. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start tipping my left wing down and I'm gonna start feeding in some right foot here. I'm actually full right foot in case you're curious. And I'm only barely keeping this thing stable right now. We're actually getting very slow. Now remember, this is just a gentle crosswind. We saw it earlier. Now remember, you're a passenger on board this plane. What are you thinking right now? Again, flight sim is, doesn't do this correctly. In the real world, it would never be that soft. Left wing down first, and we're down. As you can see, uh, we managed to do that. Uh, we sucked up a thousand feet of runway, as you can see in the process. And you can also notice that I did not end up on the center line here. I actually ended up uh, significantly off. Now just imagine your passenger in the back of that plane watching that approach. Would you want to be flying in a plane like this again? Now, of course, the next question folks are going to be like, is it really that bad? Like, does this apply to bigger planes? The answer is yes. And, uh, one of the things that would surprise you is, uh, believe it or not, even in this uh, military aircraft here, we have most of the same limitations that they actually did even in a smaller plane. Now, one of the things that makes, of course, a plane like this a little more interesting is the fact it's got computer assistance up to wazoo in order to make it a little bit safer of a journey for us. So um, any of the strange boop, 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 boops like it's doing right there is all completely a function of the turbulence. And again, we use the exact same wind for 11 knots gusting a nine there. So you can see that even with all the military greatness, it's still always a potential danger. So we're gonna go ahead and now bank this sucker over and now we're gonna pop ourselves into a nice little downwind here. I love the uh, nice, beautiful clouds over there in the distance. Oh, we have no payload today either, by the way, so we don't have to deal with any of those shenanigans. It's just a matter of, you know, kind of cleaning up my little turn here and uh, putting this thing down on the ground. For those of you uh, wanting to recreate this experiment, uh, this, of course, is a Barnes Air Force Base. This is Kilo Bravo Alpha Foxtrot. It's actually one of my destinations, uh, but I ended up not flying to it because, like I said, their wind was worse than our wind. So I'm just going to let it kind of get going here. And I uh, will come take this down. We're doing 250 in the traffic pattern, which I think that's enough. <laughs> I also love how you can see where all the F-15s basically hang out and ready to take off at like a moment's notice. There's like a whole base there and everything. 
Yeah, 220 is pretty good there. I'm gonna swing down. You can see the computer's doing a pretty good job of uh, taking a lot of little bumps and oops and outs and kind of a thing like that out of it. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, start slowing down here. I love the FX16. This is, if I owned a jet, this would be the one. I mean, there are other jets I absolutely love, 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 but um, this one especially is uh, just got a place in my heart, so to speak, because it's just such a great airplane. And we're just gonna come around here. They did not get the fly-by-wire correct in uh, Flight Sim here. I think uh, DCS and BMS does a much, much better job of it. Not bad, not bad, but it's just, it can be done better elsewhere. Let's go ahead and pull that in. We're going to drop the landing gear. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Come on! And there we go. Let's go. Now, notice here that with an F-16, uh, it's a lot harder to actually grab. Um, and that's one of the kind of interesting little things here. All right, everything's set correctly. Now you're seeing I'm actually flying a crab angle versus uh, trying to fly a, a wing low here. If we try to wing low, we could probably get away with it. It's just a lot harder with an F-16. But remember, this is the same wind or F, our little uh, C, our Cessna 172 has experienced. I wish that guy wouldn't land. Now watch, same problem. Whoa, whoa. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, geez, I would have just broken the jet. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that was not pleasant. So the key thing here is uh, sort of the takeaway of the video that I'm trying to get everybody. And again, that was pretty bad. I probably probably would have gone around on that one, but just for the purposes of demonstration, you can see just how nasty that can be. Obviously, a much, much longer approach would have been safer for us. But the key thing that I want to show you here is a lot of things we can get away with in the flight sim, you can't actually safely do in the real world. Or when you are trying to do them in the real world, you run into a situation where you could potentially put other people in danger or, you know, of course, the craft and uh, your ability to ever fly again and your financial health potentially in danger. Enjoy.